Hello everyone and welcome to the series of videos where I attempt to complete my favorite roguelikes from the 2027 day roguelike challenge. Today we'll be playing a game called The Legend of U101. This game is pretty different from most of the entries this gem. It's very hard to get into, it has a ton of rules and like a manual of how to operate a submarine we are on and stuff like that. But I think that after understanding how to play this game, it presents a very interesting challenge and I wanted to showcase it. So the idea of the game is we are a crew of a submarine on a moon of Jupiter or Saturn, like on Europa essentially, and we are trying to um, re research the deep sea, fight the aliens that we encounter, and I guess establish a new base or something like that. I actually have never gotten that far. So let's get to it. I'm gonna show you around. Press an escape to close the pop up. Pop up. So this is our submarine. We are not moving yet. We have new radio message. New radio message. Yeah, as you see, there is actually sound effects. Uh, even though they sound a bit robotic, I think it's kind of purpose. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If I count correctly, seven crew members. Each of them is assigned to. Uh, actually, it was eight crew members. <laughs> Each of them is assigned to a station. So here is a sonar, and if I turn it on, we are gonna like send out a sonar signal that will show us the. Uh, like essentially the surroundings. Sonar target lost. Sonar target lost. Then we have a radio. We have a message telling us the coordinates of There we go. Um, we have a targeting station. Whenever we see some aliens, we can shoot them from here. We have a periscope. This is going to be our tool to to essentially examine in short on short distance what's going on around us. We have a maneuvering station, which we probably will not be using because uh, th this is kind of like an old school way to maneuver our submarine. But essentially we can actually do the same stuff with arrow keys and I will not be using this station much. But we still need to have a person assigned to it because otherwise we will not be able to actually move the submarine or like direct it. Uh, this station, I think it chooses where the generators, like which batteries the generators are charging, but the generators need, like we need to be in an area with oxygen to be able to run the generators in the first place. And finally we have this station over here where we have the batteries, where we have the battery control. So. I think the manual somewhere explains some setting of how these batteries could go, but essentially we want we, we can just leave this aside and let all the batteries be disjoint, but usually actually we cannot. We want to direct one of them to motor, otherwise the motor will just not move. So let's send the charge from battery A to the motor. The charge from battery B to battery A. So whenever we're using up a bit of charge to run the submarine, we're gonna have the backup charge coming from here. And let's send the battery so SHK is the electric, the electric shock we have, which is what we fight enemies with. If we run out of it, then it's going to be pretty hard to defend ourselves. So we probably want something to be charging this thing as well. Um, so we don't want to direct any charge from here to other batteries or motor. We want to probably direct the charge here, so something like this. And this actually could be viable if, for example, we ran out of uh, energy in the batteries that are charging motor we could redirect our energy from the electric uh, shock to the motor to make sure we could escape somewhere. I, I've done it once or twice before. So yeah, we have the charging on. Now I'm going to look at the solar again. Oh, I actually see an enemy right over here. Let's go to targeting station. It says unknown signal. Oh, there is a Guardian behind me. So I think Guardians are very strong enemies, and I pause the game because I don't want it to approach me. So Guardians are pretty strong, and it makes sense to shoot them, and for that we have torpedoes. 
let's go ahead and charge uh, uh, and load a torpedo using this guy over here, the captain. I am going to set him to auto repair, which is when we get damaged, he will run around and try to make uh, make the water disappear and stuff like that. And I'm going to make him load this torpedo over here. And he won't do anything because we are paused, but here we have a paused and we can charge it. Thank you. Nice. So the Guardian is still there, and I think I'm going to shoot it. Okay, I see a torpedo flying that way. Uh, I'm not sure what target we lost on the sonar, but essentially uh, we only see two targets right now. Oh hey, we destroyed the... We destroyed the Guardians was over there, it dis disappeared from our radar. So now we can get moving, I mean, we could get moving without it as well, but now it's a bit safer. So you could choose to go north or southeast, and based on the signal over here, actually I might be able to go southeast. There seems to be more space there. So, let's see, let's look into the periscope, let's go southeast. Southeast, very good. Unless I'm past the game. Yeah, so those circles over here are the oxygen rich zone. That's where we can refill our batteries near the generator. They crawl very far away. So it's actually kind of dangerous to have the sonar on because then the enemies can hear me just like I can see them. But I don't think that's so close to my base I should be very scared. Actually the crawler is coming towards me from all I can tell. Let's let me do the periscope again. And the targeting station is telling me that the crawler is coming towards me actually. Alright. Not anymore. There is scope. And summer again. Okay, we're not in a very good area in terms of visibility. There's a lot of walls. I'm gonna head south. Okay, set, thank you. Let's put your periscope to make sure we don't hit this wall. as well so you see battery b is running out of charge because it's uh, because battery a is charging the motor and then battery b is charging battery a so when we enter this oxygen rich zone over here we might want to turn on the engines which makes us a bit more visible susceptible to enemies but also lets us charge the batteries there getting close and then we have the coordinates over here um, we will need them when we're trying to find enemy bases or if we're trying to find our home base oxygen is so beautiful so here i guess this one the generator is on so it's charging both batteries i should see my charge being Breathing slowly. Let's see what else we can do. Yeah, I definitely don't want to hit one of these. 
már a oxygen muszolni kell, ezt csinálom. submarine even further. Not very convenient. 
but I see a passage to the east, so maybe we are in good shape. Oh gosh, there's another enemy. A worm. Worms are very dangerous, actually. They, they move at very, very high speed, so you have to destroy them before get, they get to you. It's very hard to shock them when they're close. So, sonar. I want to shoot it at torpedoes the moment I'm out of here. Turpist. And the moment we are moving in that direction, let's start it. And I think I'll send somebody to load up more torpedoes. You go over there. No torpedo, please. Oops, that's not what I want. No torpedo. I think that's not what I thought it was. I wonder if my torpedo actually hit the thing over here because the worm is still alive. Gosh, that was bad. Oh no, I did it again. <laughs> I destroyed my submarine, that was terrible. I don't know why it happened though. I was supposed to shoot the worm. Alright, 
a message coming in that's gonna tell me coordinates of an enemy base I need to destroy. I wonder if that enemy base was going to be the one that I see right here. Uh, this one over here. But we're not in very great shape anyway. Let's try to destroy this base. Slow. Go north. It's possible to disembark. Okay. Get ready, so we're entering a different mode of this game, which is essentially destroying the enemy base. And that mode reminds me of uh, XCOM quite a lot. Essentially you have this squad that's trying to exterminate aliens and destroy the enemy base. Four of the crew members left the vehicle, blah blah blah. Explosion has been intense, aliens are inside. So I need to strategically be pausing the game and assigning them tasks and then I'm pausing it and they're gonna be running in real time. Enter. Okay, so here's my crew, four people, and I see an Arachnid right over here. Uh, they're all firing automatically and Arachnid is not very strong, but I do expect it to come over and bite some of them. Nice. And we immediately shot it. So sometimes we miss and we want to like kind of be moving away from it to be able to destroy it. Our best bet to destroy the base is actually the grenades. It takes like, I don't know, a hundred shots without the grenades. But we also need them for bigger enemies. There is like a golem or something like that. Uh, I didn't want to change target, I want to move. Uh, I forgot how to move. Yes, you move, please. How do I move? Uh, this parking. Move. Middle mouse button that I do not really have. I don't, don't remember how to move this game. But I actually don't have a proper mouse. Okay, don't get is throwing a grenade, so I don't want to click on that. How the hell do I move? Control. 
So essentially we need to come close, shoot our grenades at the base, and then get out back into this area. This, this one has two grenades. This one also has two grenades. Please stop biting me, Mr. Huge Ant. Grenade out. Grenade out. You also throw a grenade at this. Grenade out. Right, is he hitting us? Seventy five percent, seventy five percent. Why are they not shooting it? Right, out. Nice. Okay, we destroyed the base, right? Great job, let's get out of here. So we go back here, everyone. Let's hope no giant golem appears and destroys me before I get there. Wonderful. That was pretty easy. We got very lucky with the base positioning. Alien 
base and I still haven't gotten on the first task. That's inconvenient to say the least. See, the game lets you pause at any time and lets you plan your moves, but still creates this thrill of escaping the enemies and whatnot when you are in real time mode. Okay, so we'll explore this part. There was a base here, we destroyed it. Let's see what else is out there. Meanwhile, wait, do they consider this repaired? This looks kind of. Very well repaired.
stereo over there as well. We have a field and oxygen operation. Oops, that was no left to it as well. Heading that curve, go more left. Heading that curve, go more assist. Before the heading that curve, we have exited the oxygen operation zone. We have a field and oxygen operation zone. receives a radio message or if I should just attack this one. I'm not sure if the game might give me a base I've already destroyed and then immediately say yep you completed the first task. So I don't want to waste our efforts here. But you know the base is too close to really ignore. Okay, 
destroyed the sea. Problem as you can see after like six grenades. It's unfortunate. Sometimes you see much more golems. It's pretty random. Unlike XCOM, the game does not let you just pack up and leave. So you gotta fight it out. And the moment you start to lose crew members, uh, it's pretty bad because then you, cannot, you, you cannot operate your submarine anymore. Oh no, he died. I was not careful enough. Nice. So yeah, this person had a grenade and died. Unfortunately, we cannot pick up grenades from the dead members. Also pretty convenient. We're also really feels the pain when we're back to the submarine and we have to use less people to control the same amount of systems. sometimes do this, they just attack your dead person and they try to abuse it if you see a lot of golems. Yeah, I'm not really sure what that golem is doing. I hope it's going to do 
charging the engines, charging the batteries by running the generators. I'm sure all the enemies know I'm dead. Oh, giant soldier. That shit. Okay. 
Okay, we can make it. Just a bit left. Thank you. 
this was the Legend of the 101. I really like the game. I mean, if it has bugs, then I guess it needs to be fixed, but I think this game is an amazing effort for a 7-day roll challenge. There is some sounds in it, there's two different modes, so you can even say more if it comes the and stuff like that. Uh, the squad-based fighting is pretty cool. I hope that there is like an interesting story further when you actually destroy these bases when I'm not sure what happens afterwards. Uh, maybe it also has a bit of balancing issues because sometimes people do get wiped out. Maybe it's just that I'm not really great at this game. I think maybe the length of this game is to be reduced because like going from one place to another takes a long while. I'm pretty sure this video is going to be over one hour long and we only destroy one or two bases, right? But yeah, those things aside, I think this game is pretty interesting. I hope the alpha fixes this issue. So I'm going to do this again. Alright, that's it for today. Uh, this was the Lady Computer of Q101. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.